towards that seventh and eighth zone. Doesn't actually get to see that ninth zone too often. So we'll see if he can make it to the super end game right now. His accuracy has to be the thing to carry him over. A bloom fight with Scrib that he's winning for now. Even HP, but he gets the last peak. <laughs> nice shot. As well, well done from him. Meanwhile, Hardfind finds himself in an engagement against Curzon. Uh, Silent Curzon right now does have high ground. This is, you know, still kind of like early season Fortnite ramps just straight up. And in the end, it nasty. is going to be Hardfind getting the elimination and taking the L. And, if, and as a result, just nasty from Hardfind. But they really have not been nearly what I thought they would be. Have not been OP or too strong. Meanwhile, Griff going to find himself in an engagement here. Look at this. He gets tagged up pretty even in this fight right now between Ditrix and Griff. They're both at about 100 HP total, as it looks like Griff has the high ground as it currently stands. Needs to try and get the edits. This could be so bad for Griff. This is his one opportunity, possibly stolen away from Dietrich in terms of going for that top slot, number two or number one. He has Ooh. an opening on the window. Does not actually land the shot, lands the second, and the third with the right Ooh. hand peak slides right in. Easy claps for Griff. Yeah, that's exactly right. With the charge shotgun as well, that's obviously all he has. But is holding that floor. He could just slide in, boost it off, the pyramid, but there's a stair actually that stops him as well. What was holding that edit? Glad he didn't go for the all in. Here it is, though. The fight breaks out. Hard find does not get the first shot. Second one might land soon. Yeah, it's like a little scary here. Goes to the edit. I'm surprised why he took so long to go for that edit instead. He's playing a lot of mind games here, hard find. And you saw earlier on when he was trying to get some of those walls. Now hard find, a little too tricky, but he, he's going to get taken out. I think he got a little bit too fancy there, Shio, in my eyes. Kind of overthought that one. At the end of the day, it was KK wet. He finds himself in a fight against Ender right below him. Both of them in kind of shambles right now from an HP perspective. Griff says, yeah, you're right, Fallout. I'm going to back out for that exact reason. Wait a minute. He set it up. One shot, two, maybe? No. But Ender is white health. I thought it could have been a visual glitch, but never got any shields off of spawn. There's still three people upstairs at Stark Industries waiting for that vault to open. Little do they know the key card is under duress, under risk, all the way down low, past the island. Ender flies up again, headshot, and then shotgun down. Griff with the combination to keep his game alive. That's exactly right. Nice job from Griff. I'm liking these decisions to back out. I'm in a good spot. Let's not risk the 50-50 type of fight where I might, you know, roll the dice and get one pump, especially with only 70 HP. Meanwhile, Clint Berry is in a one versus one here against a member of Rams. It's going to be Kezix, who we saw playing earlier. A little bit of a box fight. Both lethal when they land their shots, usually for 100 or more HP. This is a fight you have to care about. Top 10 right now for Clinberry. Same position as Hardfine, but Hardfine was the one who was taken out, biting off a bit more than he could chew. Clinberry just 53 HP and leaves an edit open for way too long. Yeah, that's exactly right. Unfortunate. Kezix, though, continues to roll from it was game two where we saw Kezix have a couple of good fights, but overall only, I think, 58 total points needs to be as Dijin is currently in circle, but has three players within a somewhat nearby vicinity to him. He's going to be trying to stay alive, making it to late game here. As he wants to get rid of this truck, it's kind of annoying him. And he wants to try and make a later rotation. We'll see if he gets lucky with the storm. Just farmed up some metal, but Fallout, what is he going to do? Actually go for this fight. It's going to be difficult. He's going to be in trouble. If only you knew how low Kinman was or how long this fight went down for. There's one. Could he get Vortex for two? Possibly he holds the wall. This could be trouble for the number one player. That's exactly right. I think for Putrick, the key was really what he did last game. I think in the first couple games, he got taken out early. He took a couple box fights that he didn't want to do. So make it to late game. Give yourself a breathing chance. Mm -hmm. I know we talk about it often. It's really the obvious answer. But if you can survive to late game, you're going to get a few eliminations, especially in very, very late game when people are tunneling on moving circles. You're going to find one or two picks. If you can get yourself to a top three finish, this is such a placement heavy format. I think you got to focus on making it to late game. In my eyes, Putrick, repeat that formula you had success with last game. Do the same exact thing. Shio, anything you'd add to that? I would absolutely agree. It's just getting to that late spot. But when you're like in, in these scenarios where Jams and Alfar are very similar spots, 40, 50 points, it's going to be tough when these Titans are holding you down. Walfar now with 132 points is moving up. Dgen right beside him trying to play towards late. Box to box. There's Vortex though, number one. If you're Vortex Fallout, if you're someone like Snappy, Walfar, or uh, Walflar, what do you do here? What do you do to maintain that leader, possibly clinch first? Look at how where Benji is though. This is a completely different side of things for the players who've been watching so far. But Fallout, it's sad to say, it's the same story for Benji every time in Grands. For yeah, some reason, cannot get towards the top 15, the top 10. If there's a game to turn it around, it has to be the back half. It has to be game four. 
That's exactly right. And I think Benji's a player that can turn it around. I saw a lot of people being very critical of Benji in the chat. Yes, in Grand Finals, he has not had the best track record as of late, especially. However, you can't take away from how strong of a player Benji is. The fact that he gets here consistently, the fact that he constantly plays his top 15, top 20 is impressive in its own right, but no! I was trying to manifest. I was trying to give him my energy in Kiku says Fallout. I never like saying a player is unlucky, but I honestly don't know what tips to give. I've seen Benji exactly. try everything so far, still not working, but there are two games left. It's unfortunate for him, but I know he can bring it back. We've seen two game Don Johns just take over everything in terms of these finals, grand final formats. Even for calling for grands, you know, Mega Dubs and their infamous World Cup run just made it happen when their backs were to the wall. We'll see if it's possible right now, though. Look at Verox Fallout. Look at Teak at the other side of the map. He doesn't have half stone, but what these guys do have is a chance to push themselves away from Renji, get closer to Vortex, try to take first place. Remember, once again, drilling it into your heads, 100 points. Anyone who's passed that right now is looking so good and they're all getting eliminations. Wolf, uh, Wolfler did before and now Verox is doing it too. Yeah, that's exactly right. Verox, keep in mind, is in seventh place right now with 114 points. The Englishman looking very, very strong. Enterprise Gaming going to make the rotation all the way through. That's going to be a far rotation, which makes things a little bit scary here because he is ne now next door neighbors. He just moved in to quite a few people that are a little bit angry that might want to take him out. So Verox needs to be a little <laughs> bit cautious, but I like that rotation overall because that means he can use his AR to try and get long range picks, much like, much like he did moments ago against Anas. He was able to get the eliminations on Become Legend's very own Anas. Now we'll see what Verox can do in this one. Although he's moved in, his moving truck is still ready, though, Fallout. He's got so many shockwaves. <laughs> if there's an eviction notice, he can easily shockwave to another side of the zone, even, or just change his elevation immediately. Will be tricky for Teak, though, to come in. Nice chain there. About the shockwave into a nice bouncer. He moves into yep. nowhere as high as the player we saw before, but he's in there. Frey picks up eliminations. He's also past 100 points. Thomas HD, alive in this game. But look at these names. Pay attention to them. Griff, Wafflar, Teak, Vortex, all side by side. AD also moving in to, I would say, the penthouse suite of this server. All sharing possibly <laughs> the same room. These guys are the kings, the top 10 you're looking at, at the center point of the zone. Yeah, I was about to say it's the Trump Tower, but probably not yeah. the most popular reference. I'm going to say this is the Dubai Tower right now. People are moving into the most tall building in the world and the most one of the most expensive buildings in the world. But guess what? Also, keep an eye, not just not over at Cam of Who's Alive. Keep an eye on who we have on screen. We just had Teak and we have Vortex. First and second place. Vortex went back to his old way with aggression. Two eliminations so far, and he's just getting started. I liked what I saw from him. 180 points, whereas Teak right behind him in second place. We'll be switching back and forth here. Both of them, everyone going to have to make a rotation here on moving circles. Teak with 165, I believe, points that is. That's 15 points behind. He came in with 157, so he's really just surviving on placement alone. And they'll, of course, keep in, in, continuing increasing their placement points. A 1v1 race for first place right now between these guys, both rotating at the same time towards the same place. Three eliminations separates them from either glory or doom. Vortex moves forward as Teak focuses on the back, though. Vortex is actually moving way further than Teak, and Teak does not have any more rotation to get across. He has to use just his feet. Yikes. Vortex now is still looking ahead. He's trying to get to the first side of zone. Yeah, Vortex with crash pads is a dangerous combination. I'm excited to see what he can do with them. Now he's going to be getting closer to these fights. We know this is the point in the game where the final drop of that roller coaster is coming, just to keep that analogy alive here. Vortex is going to find one, hits the headshot. He continues to dominate. I saw someone in chat say that he played earlier, that he plays low DPI, and that's yeah. why he hits so many shots. It clearly shows. Vortex no. has the rotation as Teak is going to get done. taken out. Oh my goodness, it's all Vortex all day here as Michael Fine is going to take out Teak, giving Vortex an opportunity to increase his lead significantly. Teak was in second place, taken out. Vortex already had a four elimination lead, 20 points over Teak. And now, as the whole server rumbles with crash pads, shockwaves, and shots, Vortex stays alive and tries to get more points, pushing even further again, possibly by 60 points. Who knows? I don't even see him right now. He could have gone down on the rotation. Verox is all the way up top. There he is, towards the backside of the zone. Vortex is barely surviving. Low amounts of shields, not sure about his build situation. He does mini up. Vitesse is now the person to take over the throne. 133 points. He could go towards first again, but it's such a stark difference from him and Vortex. Vortex, take it out, actually. He's gone. You gotta be kidding me. Vortex, I thought was gonna be so well poised, well positioned with high ground, but he gets taken out. Kiriachi gets eliminated by Kezix as well. Hen finally showing some life because he quieted down. I had a lot of hype going in for Hen in this one, but he is gonna make it in the late game. Refscard gets taken out. That's big. He was in top 20. Refscard was in a good position, especially with Teak out to potentially break into the top five. 
Thomas, only 70 points to Thomas's name, and he's going to connect for one over four ZR. Brilliant plays from Thomas coming through. Who is it that has high grounds? Verox, actually, no, Verox is still alive. I thought you said he got taken out, so it might have been a misread. Verox still in this one. This is a great opportunity for Verox to break into the top three. Verox stopped Vortex. The T is not there. 165 oh, points bad. for him. He got eliminated. Thomas HD is looking to steal away points from the top 10 of this lobby. He's looking to move in as well. A big one pump shot, but he did not get the elimination. That was Hen actually who picked that one up. Hen is alive in this game, but Tess is there from the top 10 looking to stay in. DGen has made it this far all the way from NA East with a sliver of HP box to box with Titans. That's exactly right. Hen, DGen. Tinox and high ground, Thomas on low ground. This is a stacked late game here and is an absolute Oreo cookie right now with everyone above each other. Thomas connects for one over DJ and the American gets taken out. Thomas isn't done yet. Five eliminations to Thomas's name. This is a must win game for him. He's gonna find one more. Look at the flank coming through. I love the rotation. Connects for a good shot, but not gonna get the elimination he needs. Hen got the siphon he needed to keep himself alive in this late game, Shio. Boom! Hen gets taken up all the way from the top side, though. Tinox holding up height. 1v1v1. One, one, one. Zaykep, Thomas HD on the bottom side. Tinox is looking to just rattle down shots, but Zaykep is having none of it. A big trade midair. Thomas is getting crazy on the crash pad down on low. He breaks it off, and Zaykep gets dropped off the top. Thomas HD is just swimming. He can hardly breathe. Tinox is just trying to stay up and alive. Two pumps to trade, but it's Thomas that comes out with a better deal and the sixth Elim win. Who is in first place? And I know what you're all thinking. It's got to be, and it is. It's Vortex up on top, 209 points. But Teak, so close. The July champion is right behind with 171 wow. points. Waffler now coming up to the top five, sitting in third place. We do have Virox in fourth. And then, of course, Snappy is going to be in fifth.